So the presentation time is 30 minutes, and that will be followed by a 10-minute question and answer session. Please give a warm welcome to Maridal Seth. Uh, all right. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Ridul, and today we are going to talk about network science, graph theory. Uh, just by a show of hands, has anyone heard about network science or graph theory before? Has anyone used? All right. Has anyone used network X before? A Python package. Oh, that's nice. And uh, so, so in this talk, we're going to have a brief overview of what is network science and how we can use network X to model a certain class of problems. Like if you can think about your data as a graph or a network, then you can uh, then you can extract more information out of it. And in this talk, we'll see how we can do that. So just a quick about me. Uh, I'm one of the core developers of Network X. I started as a Google Summer of Code student back in 2015, and now I'm mentoring students. So, like, you know, life has come a full cycle, and my current work is funded by a grant from uh, Chan Zuckerberg Initiative. So, I do open source full time. I'm living the dream, and I also do a bunch of other things on the side. I, I help with the scientific Python project and. Uh, I help with some other projects too. So let's dive in. So, so f first of all, all during the talk, you would see that I kind of say graph theory, I say network science, what does that mean, right? So, I mean, they're, they're kind of the same thing. It's basically like if you ask mathematicians, they would say graph theory. If you ask the fancy data science people, they want a fancy term. Graph theory is not fancy enough, so they came up with network science. So. Uh, in short, like if you can, if you think that there, there there are some relationships between your data points, if you can somehow model your data or think about your data as something that looks right, like you know, like these blue dots could be your like you know, data points. That could be anything, and these connections could be like you know how they interact with each other. Like this could be a molecule. This could be a transportation network. This could be. Uh, Twitter, this could be Facebook, right? So if you can, in my head, if you try hard enough, anything can be modeled as a, uh, as a network. So once you can do that, then this network itself has a lot of interesting properties that you can test out, you can calculate them, you can find what's important here, what's not so important here. Like, you know, so like the first step is always modeling. So if you can model your data, as something that looks like this, then that's a good start. So you know, let's just talk a bit more you know, technical definition of what we just said, of what I just said. So, so you need two things at a minimum to create a graph or a network. Well, one of them is called uh, a node set, and the other one is edge set. So and if you are mathematics oriented, like uh, this is how you would define a graph object. And the, the term sets have a very particular meaning, which is like, you, know, they, you cannot have uh, repetitions. So like, you know, once it's inside, you can't have the same thing. It's not like a list where you can have the same object multiple times. And an edge set is basically a record of relationships. So if you have one entity uh, that comes up in the node set, if you put any two of those entities, and if you want to connect them, you put them in the edge set. And this is uh, how you would uh, build a simple graph. Like, depending on how fancy you want to be, you can build on top of this definition. There are things like hypergraphs. There are things like multigraphs or mixed graphs. That is not, like, that's, that's out of scope for this talk, but there are a lot of uh, fun things that you, you can build on top of this very simple uh, definition. So that was a quick uh, like context about graph theory and network science for people who haven't heard about this before. So uh, I work on a package network X. So the answer for why network X is because I work on it. But anyway, uh, the, the more serious answer would be that, in my opinion, again, these are all opinions, right? So in my opinion, it's very flexible. And by flexible, I mean, Anything can be a node 
in network X. Like if you remember the blue dots from the last uh, slide, in network X, that blue dot could be an integer, a string, that could be a, a music file, that could be a signal, that could be another graph itself, that could be an image. So any hashable object that you can create in Python, that could be a node inside network X. So it's, it's extremely, uh, you know, I mean, some people would say it's too flexible and because of that flexibility, some problems do pop up, but it's extremely flexible of what you can model with network X as nodes and edges. And you can, and like, uh, if you remember those black lines, the, the connections, that just looks like a line, but in network X, you can also add like a metadata to it. Like, for example, if it's the transportation network, between like, you know, Tokyo and Kyoto, like there, there are multiple ways of going from Tokyo to Kyoto. You can take the bus, you can take the train, you can take, you can probably fly. So like, you, know, you, can, you can encode all that information inside the network X uh, uh, data structure. And it's pretty easy to use, and again, in my opinion, and it's, uh, it's, it's, and it's an old package. It's, it's almost 20 years old now. And uh, we have good documentation opinions, uh, I think the code is pretty readable. So like one of the, uh, like one of the goals of the package and one of the, like, you know, the true aims of the package is to make sure that the code that we write is readable by a first year undergrad in mathematics. So like, you know, you don't just use the package as a library, but if, if someone fancies, and if someone fancies, they should be able to read the code as well. Uh, so we, so, so that's what you know, we don't try to over we don't try to make the code over performant like if if we lose on readability so readability is very important uh, for us and because it's pure python there's no number there's no cython there's no there, there, there are no c c uh, fortran bindings in the back end it's pure python which again has its trade offs but because it's pure python it's inherently multi platform any any device that runs python can run network X and we do not have any dependency. I mean, there are certain bits that depends on NumPy and SciPy if you want that, but because we don't have any dependency, if that if something runs Python, that should be able to run network X. And we are powerful. We, we have lots and lots of algorithms. We have lots of functions of manipulating different data, different kind of data structures. And given enough RAM, you can basically put in extremely huge data sets too. But again, if you want 10 million nodes, you would need a very beefy computer. So disclaimer. Uh, just a bit of history of how this came about. So 1991, the first Python release happened. Uh, in 1998, there was, a, there was like an essay by uh, Guido about how we can implement graphs in network, uh, in, in Python, in like general Python. And that uh, API was pretty much, I think, uh, I wasn't there around that time, but I think like that API was also uh, inspirational of creating this. So in 2002, a research project was started at Los Almos National Laboratory by Eric Hagberg and Daniel Schurt, who are the initial authors of Network X. And in 2004, that the first uh, public announcement of Network X was made at SciPy US. And in 2005, we had the first public release and so on and so forth. And in 20, like just yesterday, we had the first 3.0 beta release. So if you already depend on Network X somewhere in your code bases, please do pip install slash dash dash pre so you get the pre releases and please test it out. If we have a bug, please let us know. And so a bit about the data model. So when I say the code ends up being readable, it's very friendly, this is what I mean. So this is how you, how you would use Network X, recommended way. Is like you import it as NX, you create a new graph object, NX.graph. Just like graph objects, we also have something called a directed graph object, a multi-graph object, so we have those. And to add an edge, you just call add an edge. And because you can add arbitrary number of things. For example, we just added something called a weight. We can add many more things to this. You can basically just like, you know, overload the functions, the signature and keep on adding things. And 
network X is pretty flexible with this. So, and for example, now you have this network and you want to find something called a shortest path. This is, uh, this is the API for that. And underneath, everything is a dictionary. Like that's our data structure. It's dictionaries of dictionaries of dictionaries. If you take a graph object, and if you try to deconstruct it, this is what you would get. Uh, where the first level of dictionaries are the nodes, the second level of dictionaries are that node's neighbors, in the sense that you know which nodes are the first node is connected to. And then the third uh, uh, dictionary level, you basically have metadata. So like, you know, for example, we just had wait here. And because these are dictionaries, anything that can be a key in this, in a Python dictionary, can be a key here. So th that's why, like, and, and, it, and for anything to be a key in a Python dictionary, it needs to be hashable. So once you have that hashable object, then uh, then that's about it. You, you can you can uh, thrust that in into a network X graph. So, uh, and uh, and one of the reasons we chose uh, like you know dictionaries as a building block is it reads very naturally for like you know if you are doing graph theory. Uh, so like if you want. Uh, and, and the graph object itself follows the uh, follows the code structure of what a dictionary would look like. So, like you know, square brackets. If you do square brackets on a graph object, you basically get a dictionary of neighbors in the sense that uh, if I'm connected to three other uh, objects in this graph by doing g uh, g of u, that's what I would get. When I do G uh, and like you know, do two square brackets, I get the edge attributes. So this is basically the dictionary that we saw in the previous slide. And if you want to find if a node is in the graph, you do N, N and G. If you want to loop over all the nodes, so you do like a for loop over that. So like this is this is why dictionaries are a very important uh, role in network X itself. And uh, Python dictionaries are uh, are highly optimized and this representation of what we are doing is called adjacency matrices, no, not matrices, agency list. And because these are uh, usually graphs are very sparse, so for, by sparse I mean one node in a graph would not be connected to all of the other nodes in the graph. So it's very sparse, and that's why something like dictionary is very uh, performant. And in terms of algorithms, we have a lot of algorithms. Like, like the, the funny thing, or the funny or sad thing was that we, no one actually knew how many algorithms we have implemented. So like one of the members in the community actually ran this couple of days back. They tried finding how many algorithms we have. Apparently we have 595 algorithms implemented. We don't know if that's the right number, but around 600 algorithms are implemented in Network X. And I'm, I'm not going to go through all of them. So depending on what, like you need to ask the right question from your data to figure out what algorithm you want, right? So uh, I'm just going to cover like, you know, uh, three broad classes. Uh, like, you know, for example, I want, to f I want to find an important node. Basically, I want to find like, you know, which nodes in my graph are like, you know, important. I should like, you know, protect them or are they bottlenecks? The second important question that you can ask from a network is, uh, where do I jump next to find my path? And like, for example, in, in, a, in a case of shortest path, you want, you want to build Google Maps, right? You want to build how I can go from one place to another, because maps themselves can be modeled as a network. You, you can also build the shortest path, sh shortest path algorithms. Then you can also ask questions like, who should I be friends with? For example, if you want to build recommendation engines, for example, if you have a social network and you want to find, you want to have that uh, uh, thing on the right side, like you know, maybe you know this person, maybe you know that person. How do you build that? So these are some classes of problems that you could solve with uh, network theory. For example, if you look at this node, uh, th this network, how would you how would you define an important node in this network? This is how it looks like. Like, some people may say that you know, it's the one in the middle, the number four node is important. Some would say three is important because it's connected to the most, most number of nodes. And 
uh, if we like you know, run these two different algorithms, one is called betweenness centrality and the other one is called degree centrality, they give very different results. So according to, for example, betweenness centrality, four is the most important. Now, to understand what betweenness centrality is doing here is, uh, if you want to ever find bottlenecks in your uh, network, in the sense that, you know, uh, let's imagine you have a network which is modeling the energy uh, uh, like, you know, transfer in a city, like, you know, like from, like, you know, how these uh, uh, like transmission networks are working. And in that network, you do not want a bottleneck. For example, if, if, like, you know, if one of the power station goes down, you don't want to, you don't want ripple effects in that network, right? So it's very important to find those bottlenecks in a network. And to find bottlenecks, you can use something called between a centrality. And let's just suppose you want to find who is the most influential person. Like one way of defining that is that, like let's say you look at Twitter, who is the most influential person? One could just say that who has the most number of followers. And I'm not saying that's the right thing or, or the wrong way of looking at it, it's just how you define it. And to get that number of followers, you basically need something called, uh, something called degree. And uh, in, a, in, a, in a graph, a degree is basically the number of neighbors. So if someone has a lot of followers, they have a high degree. And, and according to degree centrality, in this network, uh, these two nodes, three and five, are the most important because they are connected to the most number of nodes. Uh, so like just in one network, just in one this network, we have two different measures telling us two different things. So like. Uh, my point of showing this was that like there's no one right way of finding these things like context is very important like you know you, you first need to formulate the right question and then think about it uh, for example in this case I'm not sure if that's visible but like this is a street network like like this is actually extracted from open street maps and you plot all the streets in a city I don't remember which city that is but and if if uh, if you are uh, trying to find like you know where to open your next cafe, you want to find a street that would be visited by a lot of people, right? So like you know you can basically build like a heat map out of it, finding the most important streets where a lot of people have to pass through, just by the nature of how the streets are designed. So that's one way of finding like you know one, one uses of why I should care about who's the most important node. And in in the in the example on the right side, it's it's a uh, it's a network of uh, emails. Like I mean, this, this is a very small network, but you can create a much bigger. Let's say in your organization, you you have access to all the emails. Not all of your employees know that, but you do have access to all of your emails. You can try to plot of how how people are interacting, and you know, this is one way of finding them. Like like if if I want to get something done. This is the person I go through because this is the person who is uh, who is connected to most of the people, and this is the person who can talk between different departments. So, things like this is also something that you can model with Network X and uh, calculate it. Then, the question about where should I jump next? So, yesterday I had a problem. My problem was to go from Narita Airport to Paikon, Japan. Well, how did I solve that? I opened Google Maps. I put in my locations where I want to go, I did that. And this whole thing is a network. In this, the, the whole transportation network of Tokyo is a network. Like the edges are your train stations and uh, paths between them is your edge. So you can, if I can overlay my transportation network on top of my uh, uh, road network, then I can find what's the most efficient or the best uh, way of reaching my destination. So again, if you have a problem like that, this is, uh, this is how you could solve it. Then on the left side, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a network of uh, how do other people link to my website? In the sense that uh, if I go from, you can also think about like, you know, your server. So like if you start from one server in your network and you start pinging to all the other servers and that ping keep on going, like you ping to a server and that server pings to another server like if you try to build something like this you can you can try to find a 
like you know latency community of like you know how far the servers are just by looking at latency and their distances and you can build something like this for your network and uh, i mean not exactly this but you know page rank the the world famous algorithm which was behind the initial google uh, that that's what it like to find the most important web pages they came up with a network algorithm it was called page rank so if you can model your things as a network which i'm saying you can if you try hard enough you can solve a lot of these problems and you can come up with more interesting questions if looking at data in a spreadsheet or a pandas data frame versus looking data looking at data as a graph changes a lot of things you can ask new questions that you would have never thought about so the next class of problems is who should i be friends with so let's say i just moved to tokyo because you know i i had an amazing experience at pycon japan and i'm already friends with two people one and two i am zero right here and i know that one and two is friends with three like should i be friends with three because I, we seem to have common friends so like this class of problem is like you know recommendation engines that how how do i recommend them uh so like if you actually join this connection line between 0 and 3 you have something called a complete graph and if you have a graph like this in a larger social network it's called a clique so like you know just like friend cliques you uh, in like normal english uh, vernacular you have friend cliques in graph theory we also have cliques and this is how you uh this is how you make one kind of recommendation engine in where you can uh, complete your cliques Uh, okay so let's take a detour about the the dots and uh, the dots and dashes that we have been seeing till now can also be represented as a numpy matrix or not numpy but any matrix so for example if we convert our graph from here to this it basically you see zeros where are, where there are no edges and you see one when there's an edge and for example there is an edge between 0 and 1 so this is one because like uh, this is one and this is one because if there is an edge from 0 to 1 in this case there is an edge from 1 to 0 to like there are certain class of uh, graphs which are called directed graphs where you have a edge from 0 to 1 which does not mean that you have a edge from 1 to 0 so in this case we have this thing uh this is how we end up with this matrix and uh for example we want to ask a question that uh, how many paths exist from node 1 to node 2 with length 2 I mean, you can think about it but it's zero there's no way you can start jumping from node 1 and you jump twice and you uh, no th there is one path and you end end up at uh, this thing right so if uh, if you jump here you have to go back here. you either go here or you go here if you jump here you have to jump back and then you have to jump back so it's it's a length it's a it's a path of length 3 so there's no way of go, uh, going there in uh, two jumps and for, uh, like th there are some matrices in the side uh, if you can translate your data to a network which then can be translated to matrix matrix then you have this whole class of uh, it's called spectral graph theory which can solve a lot of your problems extremely quickly and because they have uh, they are very specific uh, uh, notions of how to deal with these uh, matrices and for example if you do like uh, something called a uh, like if you take matrix power like if you for example uh, this is the this is the matrix that we got in the last slide this is the graph if you take a matrix power of 2 here the resultant gives you the number of uh, the number of walks from one uh, node to another node and if you look at the the diagonal here it it is basically saying that there is one way you can go from node 0 to node 0 in two steps which is basically from 0 you jump to 1 and then you go back to 0 if you look at uh, node 1 it's saying there are two ways you can go from node 1 to node 1 in two steps and for that it's you jump from 1 to 0 and then you jump back and or you do go from 1 to 2 and then you jump back so 
like th these are these are some fun properties you can reveal with uh, matrices the other fun property is how do like how does information spread in a network i mean this is another thing for example you want to find how like you know how rumors are spreading in your network you, you know let's take the example of uh, uh, like like the email network you have of your organization and you know how people talk to talk with each other so if you want to spread uh, some gossip in the office how do you start and from where do you start and you want to model that it's this is one this is another way of doing that i'm not saying it's a nice thing to do but it's just a way of doing that so a lot of this that i have presented now i mean it's it's generic network science you can use network x to do that but there are some other tools in the ecosystem too so i do want to give them a shout out so there's something called igraph uh, there's graph tool and there's kugraph all of them there's a trade off that you make always right so you need to choose the best tool that works for you and but there is something fun happening right now so the like one uh, one thing that we have heard often by people is that people love people love network x network access api but because it's pure python it gets slow and we can't really fix that until like you know python 3.11 the c the faster c python projects like whatever they do we get that but we can't really fix it at a lower level and i mean we we could write we could start writing cython and all that stuff but we we do not want to do that because we want to keep our package pure python we want to keep our package extremely readable so what we are working on right now is we are building a dispatch system in the sense that uh, there are some other more efficient uh, implementations out there for example one of one of the nice ones is called graph plus it's like open blast but for graph so it's called graph plus and uh, the idea here would be that you should be able to keep your code and assuming that backend implements the algorithm it should it would directly dispatch to it for example in the future now it does not work right now but in the future you have uh, gpus on your uh, you, you have gpus available but network x does not work natively on gpus but kugraph does so which is the one by nvidia so if you have gpus if you have kugraph installed even though you are running net, uh, network x you should be able to dispatch it to uh, to that and with this i would also like to invite you to uh, contribute to network x so you know we have our main repository which is basically for like you know the code so if you if you like that you can uh, you can you can if you can help us improve documentation you can help us build new features one thing that i'm actually interested in is uh, is translating our tutorial we have a tutorial on our website to japanese because i've seen a like at least on twitter i've seen a lot of uh, japanese users use network x and they tweet about it in japanese i do not understand that but like you know having a tutorial in japanese would be something fun and we also have something called nx guides and the idea behind this uh, initiative is that we want to like a lot of times these scientific packages would have good documentation but a lot of time that misses context in the sense that you know, oh you can use this algorithm this is the input this is the output but sometimes you need better context of you know when should i use it why should i use it and for that like you know we are trying to build this uh, set of jupyter notebooks which should have like you know ped pedagogical notebooks of you know explaining the algorithm not just calling the algorithm like, you know how does page rank is like how does page rank work not just like you know do nx dot page rank so that's another uh, initiative everyone can help us with and lastly i would like to you know thank you uh, thank you all and if you are working on similar problems if you have any complaints about network x please tell me or uh, if you want to if you got too excited after this tutorial uh, after this talk there's also a tutorial available that you could do it has a lot of material 6 7 hours you will be well occupied for a weekend so yeah and i'll be here around so and just ping me thank you well thank you very much for your presentation um we have uh, a few questions that have come up on slido so uh, I'll just get started with the questions. First of all, 
graph algorithms can be compute intensive. So how does NetworkX scale? And is there any significant difference between using or not using NumPy and SciPy? So NetworkX does not scale that well. Like the, the scaling thing of NetworkX is that, oh, you, you, you need to have a much more bigger machine. You need more RAM, you need a more, like, you know, better processors. But with the, with, there, there is some work on, like, that's one of my projects that I'm working on is building that dispatch system that would let you use, uh, that, that would let you have better scaling. But right now, if you want to do that, go to KuGraph, which is, if you have GPUs, you can scale pretty well with that. Uh, next question. If there are hundreds of algorithms to search from, how do I find the algorithm that I need? Yeah, that's a, that's a million dollar question. I, like, like honestly, it's, like that's why we want to build something NX Guides, where you have more context about it, but but luckily enough, like all of these algorithms are, uh, you know, they belong to a certain class, like you know, like clustering, like uh, community. So you just need to like you know browse through our documentation, like you know read through the documentation. Maybe it it will tell you if it's good or bad, but it depends on it depends on a lot of things. It depends on your data. It depends on the right. It depends on the question you're asking. So unfortunately, there's no easy answer for that. Are there any resources you would recommend for reading up on business applications for graph theory? Hmm. Uh, nothing really comes to mind right now, but I could post that later in Slack. Like, nothing comes to mind right now. OK, next question. Uh, do all the algorithms implemented in Network X use matrix manipulation on the back end? Uh, no, there's only a certain s set of algorithms that do that. And one of the reasons that they're not all algorithms that are that can be thought about it uh, in a in a matrix way. That th there are certain algorithms which are very uh, combinative. So you cannot write them in a matrix way, but so, so not all of them do that. There are some options of representing a graph depending on how it is used and what algorithm is utilized. In Network X, can you specify internal data structures? No, we cannot. And maybe with this project, you could, like the, the dispatch project, you could in the future, but right now, no. Right now, it's just Python dictionaries. I mean, you can convert it to other things, but by default, it will always be Python dictionaries. So it looks like there's no more questions at the moment. So uh, thank you very much for your talk. And everybody, please give a big round of applause to the speaker. Thank you. Uh, if there are any questions and you would like to talk with the speaker directly, please go to the hallway behind us. Um, so we ask for your cooperation in not gathering around the stage because we need to prepare for the next speaker. Also, sponsors have their own booths, which we encourage you to visit. And all participants who have purchased tickets can also participate in the sticker rally at the sponsor's booths. If you collect the specified number of stickers, you can exchange them for a limited edition t-shirt. And we look forward to your participation. Thank you.